thanks so much for joining us here on 9 News Plus. I'm Chris Bianchi, and today, Colorado State Representative Brianna Tatone joins us here on 9 News Plus on this March the 31st, or the Trans Day of Visibility. Uh, Representative Tatone, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here today to discuss uh, Trans Day of Visibility. Happy to be here with you, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, Representative Tatone. And for starters, and I do apologize if this comes across in any way as um, ignorant, but I mean this in the purpose of informing our audience, um, what is Trans Day of Visibility and what is its main purpose? Yeah, well, Trans Day of Visibility is, uh, is, a, is a day where trans people can come out and uh, tell people that they're trans. Maybe some people don't know. Uh, maybe some people have been hiding it from other people. Uh, and, and that's usually because they want to feel protected. Um, but we need to let people know that we're here uh, because a lot of people, especially in governments, fortunately, uh, not as much here in the Colorado government, uh, are talking about trans people without trans people being there. And uh, we want Trans Day of Visibility to be a way for us to show that we are here and we're part of uh, the community, whether we're doctors or teachers or government officials, uh, bus drivers. I mean, we exist all over the place and uh, we want to feel like we're part of the community and Trans Day Visibility helps uh, our allies to uh, celebrate the fact that uh, we're a part of a productive member of society. Does this day hold any special meaning for you personally as the first transgender state lawmaker in the state of Colorado? Uh, you know, anytime I can be visible it is really important for me because there's a lot of people that come up to me randomly or at events that I'm at and really tell me that, you know, my visibility, uh, me being here in the position that I am in, uh, really benefits them and it really gives them hope and it inspires them to, to be something that they never thought they could be. Trans people have for so long thought of themselves as not being able to get where they wanna go and, and be who they wanna be. Uh, so whenever they can see someone like me doing this, uh, it's, it helps them to, to feel better about themselves and to grow as a person and to really thrive and, and really try harder to get to places where they think they may not be able to achieve. Today helps all of those uh, youth especially to um, grow up and, and have faith in themselves to be able to do anything. Absolutely, visibility um, so important, and obviously something that um, you embody. And now, with that in mind, um, are how is Colorado as a state in terms of a place to live in as a trans person? Is it a good place in your opinion? And if if not, what are some potential points of improvement? Well, there's always places where we can improve. Um, you know, there when we started making laws, trans people were not. Uh, part of, of that equation. We were never mentioned in it. Uh, we were never considered. Uh, you know, if you go back to the Constitution, it was even, you know, talking about men specifically, and that was it, not even women. So we've come a long way in our history of accepting different groups of people. Uh, Colorado is, is no different, but we have taken a lot of steps to include uh, trans and gender nonconforming people in the statute. So uh, we actually call out uh, transgender people and uh, we have offered uh, health insurance uh, benefits for people on, on uh, small group plans. Uh, our Medicaid is really for having people um, get the care that they need through that. Uh, we have anti-discrimination laws. Um, we have uh, driver's licenses, which have an X gender marker. Uh, we made it easier for people to uh, change their birth certificate if they're trans. Uh, so we've really done a lot of things to help accept and make it easier for us to exist. And outside of Colorado, uh, you know, if you watch the news, if you hear about anything, it's not it's not great in a lot of places outside of Colorado. And uh, some states are making it so difficult for uh, families to have trans kids. Uh, in Texas, they 
recently tried to separate families, uh, the parents from their kids, because they said that they were uh, neglecting their kids by allowing them to be trans. And they're fleeing a lot of these states to come here because we have it uh, in a place where we can actually accept and, and uh, recognize these families and, and these kids who uh, want to be themselves. So uh, as far as like states are concerned, you know, when it comes to protections of trans people, we're probably in the top three, I would say. Um, we, you know, and, and that happened before I even got here. So a lot of these protections are you're not due to me being here in the legislature. It's not because I've been uh, running the charge on this. Uh, I've I've run just a, a couple bills that actually benefit the trans and LGBT community. But a lot of that stuff was being uh, put into place even before I got around. Uh, advocacy groups have been helping, One Colorado and, and some other groups have been uh, leading the charge to try to change the laws to make it better. And we've done a great job in uh, making Colorado a great place for trans people. Well, uh, specifically in regards to what you said about Colorado, that is certainly encouraging to hear. Um, with Trans Day of Visibility in mind, I know you spoke this morning at the State House. And are there any other special events taking place either in the State House or elsewhere here in the state of Colorado that you know of? Uh, I think there's a couple uh, events uh, on uh, Friday. Uh, there's uh, something on First Friday uh, with uh, Transgender Center of the Rockies. Um, this is not uh, a day that is uh, often is uh, with a lot of different events where Trans Day of Remembrance in November has more events to it. Uh, that's in, in uh, November. But uh, this is really uh, a day where it takes place mostly on social media, uh, where we uh, people uh, use the hashtag Trans Day of Visibility and we, uh, we, we show who we are and what we're doing and, and why we're proud of being uh, people who we are are and uh, we use that to try to inspire people to be themselves and and to see others like them to give them the courage to be themselves and it's a, it's a great great day for awareness sure sounds like it. and by the way uh, is there anything else you'd like to add about trans day of visibility and what it means and what takeaways um we should have about today uh yeah i mean it's it, visibility really means being able to see people. And when you can see them, you accept them for who they are. And that's what trans people have been looking for for a very long time. Uh, we've been looking for acceptance. And uh, when we step out uh, often to make ourselves visible, we become targets of people who uh, don't understand us and, and don't accept us. Uh, but we're looking for allies to stand beside us uh, when, when we're visible, uh, to defend us, uh, to be ourselves, and to uh, be accepted in society the way anybody else is. And that's what uh, visibility really means to me. Um, it, it's about bringing people together uh, for a, a really marginalized group of people who are just looking to be members of society. Well, certainly hope that today goes um, a ways to achieving some of that and stay represented, Brianna Titone. We certainly appreciate a few minutes of your time and um, your unique perspective, obviously, on this subject. So thank you for joining us here on 90s Plus. All right. Thanks very much, Chris. Thanks so much.